Hey, Bulls fans, Adam here. You're back again with another quick unboxing. And today we are taking a look at two brand new kits. We've got the Ossiarch Bone Reapers Bone Tide Nexus and their new Endless Spells. Uh, we're going to go over the rules for both uh, real briefly, but we're going to mostly be focusing on the kits. I'm pretty excited about these both. So let's get started with the new Bone Tide Nexus. Got the plastic wrap off of this miniature kit and uh, let's take a look at the back real fast this is the actual size 100 size uh it is a big kit uh i'm looking forward to building this one personally uh with my ocr clone reapers uh it's also zero points to bring so every single ocr bone player you should totally get one of these kits uh because again it's no points and it's got a nice set of rules which we have right here we'll go over these in a minute we'll come back to those uh here's the sprues <laughs> and from the looks of things it's basically two sprues and take the other box and these are two of the exact same sprues so we're going to look at this first one which is the same as the second one um yeah from the looks of things uh these kind of oscillate the the stairs you've got a big old statue here uh, it's going to be two sides. Obviously, they're going to glue back to back. Um, it's got multiple heads that you'll be gluing on. the. Uh, there's one there, there's one there. So there's going to be four heads total to create the uh, the top part of the miniature. So it's like got this really big, gnarly looking sword here. I kind of want to use that in some conversions. I don't know for what yet. Uh, but uh, you get two of them. So <laughs> that's pretty cool. Um, I'm, I'm also, again, interested to, to build this kit... Uh, you've got the little obelisks here that you're gonna build. They have like a like a another kind of pyramid thing that goes on top uh, as well. So yeah, this is a pretty intense kit. Um, I'm not quite sure how you'd want to tackle the paint job on it because you've got uh, obviously the stone, which if you're going by the box art, uh, the stone's gonna be a darker color. The bones obviously are gonna be sun bleached and stuff. So interestingly enough. Uh, so yeah, you want to probably start with the, I guess the dark colors and then work your way up. Probably the easiest thing, but, uh, it's also hollow. So if you're one of those whizzes with the, uh, the LEDs and want to do something crazy, I got a project idea for you. <laughs> uh, hook this bad boy up, wire it up and, uh, get that going on. So yeah, pretty, pretty crazy kit. I, I do want to call out that the sword details actually on both sides. So again, uh, if you can somehow mod that up and make a crazy bone tithe nexus avatar thing, that would be pretty darn cool. So again, you get two copies of the sprue. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there's a second one just going to fit right on top, and it, they are the exact same. So, yeah, uh, every single Ostrich Bone Reaper player, again, this thing costs zero points, and it's totally worth taking because we've got the rules here. And again, instructions on how to assemble pretty straightforward not a lot of surprises there what I want to show off though is here are the rules and we'll talk these real briefly so the bone tide nexus again zero points to bring with you you set it up like a normal uh, terrain feature for your army so it's a scenery piece so it's slightly different rules than regular terrain uh, during your hero phase you can choose one of the following punishments to unleash you've got the punishment of agony agony which pick one enemy unit wholly within 18 inches of the feature. On a 4-up, uh, you subtract one from hit rolls made by that unit's attacks into your next hero phase. So just straight up, minus one hit, which is pretty nice defensively for you. And offensively, it's bad for them. Then you've got the Punishment of Death, which is 36 inches. Just pick a, a unit that can see this model. On a 2-up, they take a mortal wound. Pretty straightforward. No, no, no craziness to that one. Two up, take a mortal wound. Punishment of ignorance, pick an enemy wizard within 36. Uh, on a two up, subtract one from casting and dispelling and unbinding rolls until your next hero phase. It's kind of nice. And punishment of lethargy. This is pick an enemy unit wholly within 18 inch of this train feature. Roll die. On a four up, that unit cannot run until your next hero phase. And a D6, only a single D6 is used to make charge rule charge roll instead of the typical 2d6 so yeah lethargy indeed time for the endless spells the osteric bone reapers have three new endless spells to choose from uh these actually function a little bit different than your typical endless spells uh because they are all soul linked which we'll get into here in a minute but wanted to show what they look like off here in the back 
fully assembled and painted. And uh, what's in the, the box in terms of sprues? So, first off, bases, gotta have those. Uh, and then we get into the two separate sprues here. Let's go ahead, oh, three bases, aha. This one is probably for the, uh, the skulls. So, here's the two sprues, let's go ahead and I'll set this one down and we'll focus on this one first and take a closer look at this bad boy. So again, there are three spells here. You've got the Nightmare Predator, uh, you've got the Soul Stealer Carrion, and you've got the Bone Tithe Shrieker. So uh, we'll go over each one of these. First up, this big cape thing is part of the Soul Stealer Carrion, I think, because that's the Soul Stealer Carrion. I, I thought the Carrion was the bird, but apparently not. Maybe, maybe I've got it mixed up, or maybe the, there's a printing error. I don't know. Uh, yeah. All right, so I'm back here. Just wanted to double check. I have the book. Uh, I've got the, the battle tome here. Uh, I'm reading the, the descriptions of these spells real quick. So while the, uh, the spells here, Nightmare Predator has got the bird beneath it, obviously, right? But I'm going to read the Nightmare Predator description for you, and here's the Soul Sailor Carrion as well, listed in the instructions. Uh, but I'm going to read this to you guys real quick, and we'll get back to this, the miniatures. Nightmare Predator. The Nightmare Predator is a looming conjuration of Shaishin magic. It takes the form of a disturbing terror. Bonded to its caster, it floats eerily through the air towards its master's chosen prey. Lacerating the flesh of its screaming victims with claws the size of sickles uh, before stripping them to bone. Okay. That could be a bird we've got floating through the air. Uh, maybe. Uh, I don't think the bird has claws the size of sickles, though. More on that later. Soul Stealer Carrion, however, this one is described as the Soul Stealer Carrion is a soul linked construct that soars from its caster's spread fingertips to take wings above the battlefield. Its caster can see the avian conjuration's eyes. When it perceives spiritual energy unclaimed, it will swoop down to capture it and either channel it back to the caster or blast it outwards to harm those nearby. That avian description is very much the bird so i'm guessing they just maybe didn't uh check the titling copy editing on these real quick so we're gonna go with this as the souls to lucarian carrion is a bird so it makes sense and then the nightmare predator is probably that and then of course the bone tie streakers that one so based on that deduction let's keep going here so we got the soul to carrion sprues you see here this this big one here uh, you've got the crazy torso. It's going to glue up together to, to form the uh, the the new predator creepy thing. Uh, flipping this over, we've also got parts of the um, bone tithe. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, bone tithe shrieker, which I think personally is the spell that I'm most interested in using, just because it's uh, it's got the four faces and then that obelisk type structure in there. But what it does rules wise, I think, is the more um, utilitarian option. Uh, the other one just, you know, the other uh, uh, Nightmare Predator just does straight up damage. So, which is always nice. I'm not discounting the damage. Let's take a look at the uh, Soul Steel Sealer Carrion and those options there. So, this is the kind of the kind of the base thing for the Soul Stealer uh, Carrion. There's the big bird, which is kind of cool. It's a single. Bit. It's not like multiple things there. Uh, you still have to attach the head and some other bits to it, but it's pretty nice. Really detailed on the wings, which are uh, feathered-ish. <laughs> Spirit feathers, I don't know. Um, but yeah, looks like a pretty cool kit once you get them all assembled. Um, again, they're basic endless spells here uh, uh, for the faction. Now I'm going to read some of the rules real quick. So, starting with the Nightmare Predator, uh, we've already talked about the description of it here. Uh, real fast, all of these spells are soul-linked. So, what is soul-linked? Uh, it is a spell that is directly connected to the consciousness of the caster. When the spell is cast, uh, it is a predatory in the spell. Uh, moves at the start of the battle round. Any that are soul-linked to a caster are moved first, followed by any endless spells that are, that are not. Soul-linked spells are always moved by the player whose army includes the caster... Uh, uh, the spell uh, that, uh, that always includes the caster of that spell. So whoever soul linked to that spell. Uh, the player that won the roll off to determine who moves an endless spell first 
must move all of their soul link spells first, followed by their opponent. Uh, you all, your wizard also sub must subtract one from casting rolls uh, that is soul link to an endless spell. A caster cannot be soul link to more than one endless spell at, a, at the same time. The caster is slain, and any endless spells that are soul linked to it are dispelled. So essentially, it's a predatory endless spell that you retain control of, but you do take a minus one to cast. So there, there are trade-offs, but again, you get to move it during the during the start of the round. You get to manipulate it, so uh, you do get some benefits from that. The Nightmare Predator has a couple of abilities here. It's cast on a seven. Uh, it has fly. It can move up to two d six uh, inches on a turn. It's got Perpetual Hunter. Uh, when this model is set up, the player set up can pick one enemy hero as its prey, then immediately makes a move with this model. If the model's prey is destroyed, this model is dispelled. Uh, Death Incarnate. After this model moves, roll a dice for each unit within three inches of it. On a two up, that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. If the unit was this model's prey on a two up, it suffers D6 mortal wounds instead of D3. Ossiac Bone Reaper units are not affected by this ability. So you can throw it through your lines, no problem, uh, which is kind of cool. The Soul Sealer Carrion is the bird, also soul linked, goes off on a six. It has Soul Leaf as a Soul Thief, excuse me, as an ability. At the end of each phase, roll a die for any Chaos Destruction or Order models uh, were slain within six inches of this model during the phase. On a one or two, heal a wound allocated to the caster of the Soul Link to this model. On three to four, inflict one mortal wound on each Chaos Destruction or Order unit within six inches of this model. On a five or six, do both. This also has Second Sight. Anything this model uh, visible to this model is visible to the caster that's soul linked to it. And then finally, Bone Tide Streaker. Uh, this is the one that I like. It's got Portent of Doom. It's also soul linked. Portent of Doom. Subtract one from the bravery of units while they're within 12 inches of this model. Also, Bone Reapers are not affected by this one. It also has no escape. Enemies cannot hide from the Bone Tide Streaker uh, is nearby. Add one to hit rolls for attacks made by Osseo Bone Reapers. Uh, units that target uh, target units that are within 12 inches of this model. Uh, it also moves 8 inches and again is a, is a predatory in the spell. So you can keep moving it up with your ranks. Any units that are within 12 inches uh, that aren't Bone Reapers, uh, Bone Reapers get plus 1 to hit them. So again, I think that's pretty potent uh, for the Bone Reapers as well. Uh, but yeah, that's a pretty nice set of endless spells. Well, those are the couple of the new releases for the Ossiarch Bone Reapers. Again, the, the Ossiarch Bone Reapers, Bone Tide Nexus, and their Endless Spells. Um, I think both of these are going to be nice additions to your Bone Reaper army. Uh, I definitely think the Bone Tide Nexus, uh, you're probably, probably going to want to include one of those. Just because, again, they are zero points to include in your army and just randomly have cool buffs. They also have a unique scenario uh, in the uh, Bone Reapers Battle Tome. Uh, revolving around a bone tide nexus so you kind of want one anyway if you're open play or just if you want to do some narrative stuff with it it's a really cool centerpiece model uh on top of that too you guys saw the endless spells i think they offer some really neat buffs look really cool and uh totally worth taking too so yeah there you have it i'm adam harry thanks for joining me see you next time oh. Click to subscribe. Check out more videos. And thanks for watching.